Lost Wizard on the Road Episode 1 The Road to Sulphur Mountain, Banff National Park The journey begins entering Stony Trail from Simons Valley Road. Here I exited onto Country Hills Boulevard. This was originally in order to stop in the shopping district that will show up immediately on the right. However, once I got off the freeway, I changed my mind and decided to press on without stopping. Instead of turning around, I decided to go straight through and take an alternative route that I happened to know. Eventually, Country Hills Boulevard arrives at a road called 12 Mile Cooley Road. That road will take us back to Crowchild Trail or Highway 1A. Highway 1A will take us out to the Cochrane Town Site, and at that point there is a choice of which direction we want to go. The first choice is to head west on Highway 1A from Cochrane, that will take us along the scenic route along the Bow River Valley. That's quite a nice drive, though it is a fair bit longer time-wise, and there are some fairly unpleasant road conditions at a few points. The other option, and by far the more traveled option, is to take Highway 22 south from Cochrane, and then pick up the Trans-Canada Highway, or Highway 1 westbound. That option is a fair bit faster because the highway is somewhat more direct and it is twinned the whole way. Here we are beginning our descent into the Bow River Valley and the Cochrane Town site. This is quite a steep hill going down into the River Valley. It is very important to maintain a safe speed. The corners are quite sharp. Of particular importance also is that the town site itself is exactly at the bottom of the valley at the bottom of a particularly steep incline. Coming up is the intersection between highways 1A and 22. At this point we have a choice between proceeding west on 1A and taking the scenic route through the Bow River Valley or proceeding south on 22 and taking the more direct faster route along highway 1. I chose to take the Highway 1 route at this point, even though I had originally been planning to take 1A all the way through. Here we have a brief stop at a convenience store to pick up some snacks and deal with some biological needs.
After that brief interlude, we're back on the road. We're on Highway 22, heading southbound through the remainder of the Cochrane Town site. Soon we'll climb out of the Bow River Valley and continue along a two-lane highway which has fairly moderate traffic today, but often has much, much heavier traffic. And now we reach the interchange with Highway 1. This is a fairly tight cloverleaf interchange, one which could really stand some substantial operational upgrades. And now we are on Highway 1 westbound. The highway from this point pretty much until Banff is a freeway, with the exception of the Banff National Park gate. Now, you may have noticed over the past few seconds that there's not really much to see along the Trans-Canada Highway from the interchange with Highway 22. Well, this is mostly because we've gone past almost all of civilization. So, instead of leaving you with dead silence while you enjoy the scenery along the highway, why don't I give you a brief rundown of how exactly I make these particular videos. First, I use a Panasonic HCV550 camcorder. That camcorder is set to the automatic image parameters mode, which does quite well handling changing light levels and other varying things that you encounter from the scenery. It also seems to handle the focusing quite well so that it doesn't, for instance, track the car in the foreground to the exclusion of the scenery in the background. The camera is then mounted on a suction cup mount, which is further mounted to a friction mount on the dashboard. That means there's nothing actually screwed into the dashboard or otherwise fixing it to the car, and that means that on particularly rough road or particularly steep grades, the camera can shift. However, for the most part, it tends to stay exactly where it needs to be. I record the video in real time instead of using the time-lapse setting in the camera. That allows me some flexibility in how I present the results. For instance, when passing through some interesting area, like for instance a town site or the upcoming Banff National Park gate, I can present the video at a slower pace, while through areas like the countryside we are now passing through, I can present it at a faster pace. The advantage of all of this is I get to choose that in post-production, not while doing the recording itself. That means if something unexpected happens along the highway, I can slow it down for that particular event if it's particularly interesting. Once the video is recorded, I then take it to my PC and do the various post-production that's necessary. That includes everything from speeding up the various sections of the video to 4 or 8 or some other multiple of real time, 
And also, it involves cutting out the irrelevant bits of the video, like the bits getting to the starting point, leaving the ending point, or various pauses along the way, like the stop at the convenience store in this particular video. At that point, I also record any narration that is going to be added to the video, like me talking right now. And then I use my video editing software to mix it all together into a final result. That result then gets uploaded to YouTube, where you are probably watching it now. Here we've passed by most of Canmore and are now approaching the Banff National Park gate. Since I happen to have a park pass, I can use the bypass lane to the right of the actual gate. If I didn't, I would have to stick in that lineup that you can see at the park gate to the left as I pass through on the bypass lanes. Once through the gate, the highway is little different than what it was before the gate, but the speed limit is a bit lower, and you can see since the beginning of the journey along Highway 1, the terrain has become quite a bit more mountainous. We are, after all, officially in the Rockies at this point. Coming up is the first exit to access the Banff town site. This is the best exit to take to access the Sulphur Mountain tourist attraction. However, I wasn't quite paying enough attention, since I expected Banff to be a little further from the park gate. I don't know why, it's no secret exactly where it is. Fortunately, a short distance further up the road, there's another exit that also leads into Banff. Here we are finally entering the Banff Town site. While this is not the ideal entrance for accessing Sulphur Mountain, it will work quite well. Banff has a large number of tourist direction signs scattered around at various intersections, which make it easy for the person not familiar with the area to find their way where they need to go. It does require paying attention, of course unlike those two pedestrians that are about to try crossing against the light. Banff has its typical town problems like traffic tie-ups due to parking cars and the upcoming four-way stop, although that particular four-way stop is somewhat useful for making the left turn. You can see to the right of the intersection ahead one of those tourist direction signs once we pass the parked truck. After we go around the corner, the next intersection is somewhat interesting. It's what's known as a scramble intersection. 
That's different from a typical intersection because the traffic signal has a phase during which all traffic is stopped in all directions and pedestrians are allowed to cross the intersection in all directions, including diagonally. This is actually more efficient in a lot of cases when you have high pedestrian traffic. Around the corner we'll be going over the Bow River and then after that we'll be making a quick left and then a quick right. Ideally we should be in the right hand lane here but I was not familiar with the area enough to know that so I had to make do. Fortunately traffic is light and we will be able to get into the correct lane to turn right soon after going around the corner. And here we are on the road that leads to the actual Sulphur Mountain area. Once we pass out of the actual town site and into the wilderness area surrounding the town, the road takes on the characteristics of a typical rural mountain road, with the exception of the various pedestrians and so on using the road themselves. This is, after all, a road to a tourist attraction. You can see the nice snow-covered mountains in the background ahead. And now we are entering the Sulphur Mountain tourist area. Up ahead on the left, shortly, is the access to the Sulphur Mountain Gondola Parking Area. As we enter the parking area, you will be able to see directly ahead several cars going up and down on the cable. Like any parking lot for a tourist attraction, it is loaded with pedestrians and parked cars. It is quite full. Fortunately, we conveniently find a car pulling out and we quickly snatch the convenient parking space. We have now arrived. 